Okay, in this video we are going to begin the OD turning operations to take a look at how those are applied and will work on the OD, doing the face, the OD, and doing a grooving operation as well. Okay, so the next step is we're going to go ahead and apply some turning features or turning operations to the outside of the part. So if we look at our list here of nomenclature, we can see pretty quickly we've got front, back. So these front features are for the front side that we would machine on the main spindle, and then these are going to be for the back side on the sub. So looking at it, front OD, front ID, front face, it's uh, pretty obvious here. We're going to go ahead and select that face feature so you can see if I click elsewhere when I click on the face contour that feature is the one that we're going to use to turn the face and you want to make sure that you have a tool already created I have uh, you know an 80 degree inserted you know stick tool here so I'm just going to use that so again you know the process in Esprit is select the feature you wish to apply the operation to we're going to go to turning and then I'm going to come now it, there's not a lot of stock here uh, do you want to do a rough and a finish or do you want to do just a single pass you know it really depends on what you want to do I'll do a contour on this one and then we'll try and do a roughing on the next one so I'm gonna select the contouring icon and I'm just gonna say uh, face turn and go to OD rough tool and you know for speeds and feeds you know this is all you know dependent on the material and stuff so uh, you want to set your speeds and feeds to what you want and then we're gonna go ahead and start setting up uh, you know our actual parameters of the cut so you can see here that I'm not going to get into the details of the positioning type, but I will talk about the start extension a little bit. Uh, this actually will extend the length of your feature on the screen. So we see this feature is, in this case, it's just a single you know, segment, but the start extension will create an extra feed uh, distance at the beginning, and an end extension is going to add an extension to the end. So at the end, I'm just going to say... Let's go like an extra 20 thousandths, you know, on the front and the back. We'll, we'll look at what that looks like first, just to show you guys. Uh, undercutting mode it doesn't really apply here. I'm going to skip this. I'll, I'll talk about it briefly. It just lets the tool, based on the, the back angle, the relief angle here, you know, do you want it to dip into what we call sub-features? So uh, if you're used to using the older Esprit, this is exactly the same. All of this is exactly the same as the older Esprit, so there's nothing really uh, new about these toolpath settings. The lead-in type, you know, how do you want the tool to come into the cut? So this is a feed move. Uh, you know what, on this, I'm just going to leave it as tangent, 100 thousandths. Uh, lead-out type, we're going to say normal. So in this case, we'll come down that uh, whatever I had, 20 thousandths, I think, and then we'll come off of the face. We'll say uh, another 20 thousandths. And, you know, for the links, uh, you know, on this one, because it's a, a face turn operation, this is the entry mode and the exit mode. This is a rapid move that comes from tool change to the beginning of your feed move. So how do you want the turret to behave? You want to just go straight from tool position, you know, and then back to tool position. We can set these to none. That's what I'm going to do. We're going to see what that looks like when I pick that operation. We can see... Now let me go to an F4 on my keyboard is the hotkey. You can see the little move there coming off 20 thousandths, uh, 20 thousandths extension, uh, you know, the extension. And then, uh, you know, we're going to be coming in 
from the tool change position. But you can see that my feed move is starting at a position that is uh, below the diameter in X of my stock. So I might want to increase that a little bit and that's exactly what I'm do what I'm going to do. So I'll change this to uh, we'll try we'll try 70 thousandths. Uh, we'll go a little bit more. We'll go a full hundred. So you can play with the operation and uh, make sure that uh, you know you're going to have that set to the way that you want it. I might actually want it to be a little bit more than that. So we're going to come in and see what this looks like. Let me add one extra digit there. And we're going to go ahead and see what this looks like in the machine so I can go and simulate this. Actually, let's go start from the link so we can see it coming down. And we'll step through so you see it moves in rapid in Z and X to the start cut condition. And then we come to the first feed move. And then we come off that small amount. And then we're going to come back up to the tool change position. So now what we want to do is turn the OD. So if I look at my feature list here, we have the front OD contour. And that in this part is basically just a straight move along Z. But depending on how much stock we have, we might want to make a multiple pass operation. So under turning, once I have that selected, I can come to the roughing icon and here we're going to use basically the same tool. I'm just going to say this is an OD rough. And we're going to change this to my OD roughing tool. And again, speeds and feeds, you know, whatever you want to do here. Um, we'll leave those. I think that was 500 on the other one. So uh, start extension, end extension, this is the same. So if we look at our feature, I might want to come off this blend a little bit. So I might want to add again like maybe 20 thousandths or something just to come a little bit past. Maybe even depending on the nose radius of my tool. We'll, we'll go 50. Uh, undercutting mode, you know, there isn't really anything here for undercutting to worry about. Automation is going to work. Uh, do we want to leave stock after the roughing? So here we're going to leave just 10 thou you know, even steps. We're doing 30 thou pass on each step. And uh, how do we want to lead in and lead out? So here we've got, you know, normal lead in. So here, you know, I'm going to say tangent for the lead in. And for the lead out, I'm going to say, uh, you know, we're going to leave this as normal, but maybe eh, we'll just leave it at 100 thousandths. And then the links, we're going to leave that alone as none and none. And when you say OK, our operation appears on the screen. And we can see that we're coming back uh, a little bit further. And we have that, I believe it was 10,000 stock value left on the OD for a finish pass. Now, uh, we can go ahead and simulate and see how these operations relate to each other. So we're going to go ahead and pick that link again. And we come down and you'll see that Esprit will, it will not go all the way, you know, it, it, even though we did that earlier, uh, just a single operation prior to creating the roughing operation, you know, it knows not to go all the way up there. We're using the same tool so you don't have to worry about it. So once we do this cut, we are going to go back and we're ready to continue doing some additional operations. So this is, uh, you know, turning on the OD. We can come in here and do some grooving on this groove. Let's see if we have a tool before I go ahead and start doing that. I guess we could use our cutoff tool if I need to. So yeah, I don't have a tool. I'm just going to use the cutoff tool 
which you may or may not want to do. Uh, so I'm just using it for illustration purposes. So, you know, you can look at the um, uh, features list here and you can see here at the bottom we have the front OD groove. So when I select that you can see that it gets highlighted. And what we're going to do is apply another turning operation except this time we're going to pick grooving and we are going to leave that OD groove. Uh, in this case we have the only tool that we can use here is going to be this three millimeter uh, cutoff tool for grooving and uh, we'll change some of these numbers to something like that rough pass finish pass yes so we have automation this is the stock we're going to leave after the roughing. We'll go we'll go up to 5 thou. And you know, this is the style. I'm not going to get into the different styles or the advantages or disadvantages of each. Uh, there's definitely more information in the help. I'm just going to use the multi plunge with a consecutive pattern so you can go from one side to the other. You can stagger it however you want. Um, you can do directions of plunging, uh, etc. A lot of control there for um, you know your grooving and, and tool wear of the grooving insert. So uh, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say OK and get this operation on the part, and we now have that complete. So again, we can we can simulate if you want. Uh, we'll do that really quick, I guess. We'll see that groove tool coming in and doing that operation. And then it will collide into the part. So this is a uh, retract. So we never finished the OD. So in this case, I'll want to maybe change where my tool is moving. So you know looking at everything you know you have all the control here uh, what do I want to do for um, my finish pass because this is a uh, finish pass my lead in and, and lead out are set to zero so what I'm gonna do here is maybe do a tangent lead in of say fifty thousandths and a tangent lead out um, do 50 thousandths as well because this groove has a chamfer on both ends and we can see now that my tool path is extended a little bit above the part above the uh, uh, part geometry the solid model and now when we simulate we should have that finish pass